Hello student, in this video I am going to study about or I am going to discuss about a bit about logistic uh, regression or you can say class probability estimation in case of uh, using the regression technique. Uh, in many cases uh, we would like to use the estimated probability in a decision making context that includes other factors such as cost and benefits. For example, Predictive modeling from large consumer data is used widely in fraud detection across many industries, especially banking, telecommunications, and online commerce. A linear discriminant could be usually used to identify accounts or transactions as likely to have been defrauded. The director of the fraud control operation may want the analysis to focus not simply on the cases most likely to be fraud, but on the cases where the most money is at stake. That is, accounts where the company's monetary loss is expected to be highest. So this type of different type of scenario can occur in a business scenario. So in this type of scenario, uh, linear discriminant analysis can be done to create that or to understand the things. For this, we need to estimate the actual probability of fraud. So that is why in that scenario, we need to understand or we need to estimate the actual probability of fraud. So that is why we need to estimate the probability of that class. Fortunately, within this same framework for fitting linear models to data, by choosing a different objective function, we can produce a model designed to give an accurate estimation of class probability. The most common procedure by which we do this is called logistic regression so by using logistic regression we are going to estimate the class probability of a class then we are going to use that linear discriminant to identify those uh, type of scenarios uh, what exactly is a accurate estimate of class membership probability is a subject of debate uh, beyond the scope of this book roughly we would like that is uh, probability estimates to be well calibrated Meaning that if you take 100 cases whose class membership probability is estimated to be 0 0.2. Suppose you are taking 100 cases whose class membership probability is estimated to be 0 0.2 and then about 20 of them will actually, actually belong to the class. And among those 100 cases having the class probability 0.2 but among the, those 100 cases, 20 of them actually belong to the class. We'd also like to point that that book is also like to point is that the probability estimates to be discriminative in that if possibly they give meaningfully different probability estimates to different examples. The later condition keeps us from simply giving the base rate as the prediction for every example. Say 0.5% of accounts overall are fraudulent without conditions. So, so an error values or if uh, the probability estimates to be discriminative, we, need, we want that probability estimates to be discriminative. And in that, if possible, they give meaningfully different probability estimates to different examples that is expected. So, in that scenario, we can uh, we can we can we we can uh, or we uh, do not want to put a simple base rate uh, if the probability estimation for different examples are different uh, and in the third one we could simply predict the same 0 0.5 probability for each account those estimates would be well calibrated but not discriminative at all so we can do this thing more accurately but which will lead to non-discriminative so that is what it is saying is that to find the accurate class, class membership probability is tough or is beyond to this beyond discussion of this book so that is why we are trying to understand a bit about logistic regressions uh, which will understand or give us a better way to follow that procedure. To understand logistic regression, it, it is con instructive to first consider exactly what is the problem with simply using our basic linear model. 
to estimate the class probability as we discussed an instance being further from the separate boundary intuitively ought to lead to a higher probability of being in one class or another and the output of linear function fx gives the distance from the separating boundary however this is also shows the option fx ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity and a probability should range from 0 to 1 so obviously this is confusing when we use some boundary to separate two classes then when any point is uh, situated at a very um, uh, higher distance from the separating boundary then obviously we can say that he, that point has higher probability of being in one at least one in one class or the other and the output of the linear function will be fx which gives, gives the distance from the separating boundary but also it provides another problem because fx ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity so the probability value will be obviously within the range of 0 to 1 so by having the probability estimation we can, might not be able to measure the class so let's take a brief stroll down a ground garden path ask how else we might cast our distance from the separator fx in terms of likelihood of class membership is there another representation of likelihood of an event that we use in everyday life if we could come up with one that ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity then we might model this other notion of likelihood with our linear equations but we'll take a different example one very a very useful notion of likelihood of an event is the odds the odds of an event is the ratio of the probability of the event occurring to the probability of event not occurring try to understand this point that what about odd of an event odd of an event is that is the ratio of probability of that event occurring to the probability of event not occurring so for example if the event has 80 percent of probability of occurrence then obviously the odds are uh, odds are 80 by 20 because 20 percent is not 20% uh, is the probability of not occurring so 80 by 20 or 4 by 1 so that is the odds of an event if the linear functions were to give us the odds a little algebra would tell us probably the occurrence so so here you can see in this four uh, table 4 on probability and the corresponding odds suppose the probability is 0.5 then obviously odds is 50-50% or 1 if the probability is 0 0.9 then obviously odds is corresponding odd is 90 to 10 or 9 then probability of 0 0.99 then we can say 9, 999 divided by 1 or 0.001 we can say is 1.1 is to 99 or we can say 0 0.0101 like that so looking at the range of the odds table 4 1 we can see that it's still not quite right as interpretation of the distance from a separating boundary again the distance from the boundary is between minus infinity to plus infinity but as you can see from the example the odds range from 0 to infinity so here you can see in this table you can see the odds range is 0 to infinity but our distance range is from minus infinity to infinity so using that odds of an event we can separate or we can extract some distance uh, because we are decreasing some value of from the actual distance value by half nonetheless we can solve our garden path problem simply by taking the logarithm of the odds called the log odds since for any kind any number in the range 0 to plus infinity is log uh, its log will be between minus infinity to plus infinity this, these are shown in the table 40 4 2. So for here you can see again same table and but adding that log odds where log of 1 is 0, log of 9 is 2.19, log of 999 is 6.9. So, so if we only care about modeling some notion of likelihood rather than the class members probably specially we could model the log odds with fx. So we can use this function as log odds. So lo and behold our garden part has taken us directly back to our main topic. This is exactly the log, uh, logistic regression model. That is the same linear function fx that we are examined throughout the chapter is used to measure of the log odds of the event of interest. For specifically fx is model estimations and of, of the log odds that x belongs to the positive class. For example, uh, 
the model might estimate the log of that a customer described uh, customer described by feature vector x will leave the company when her contract expires so if your model if your model estimate that uh, logarithm of the odd of the event the customer described uh, described by a feature vector x will leave the company when her contract expires that might be that can be understand moreover with a little algebra we can translate this logos into the product of class membership this is a little more technical than most of the book so we have relegated it to a specific technical details in the next subsection which also discussed what is exactly the objective function that is optimized to fit a logistic regression to the data you can read that section in detail or just uh, we can go for that one but try to understand this point first for probability estimation logistic regression uses the same linear model as do our linear discriminants for classifications and linear regressions for estimating numeric target values the output of logistic regression model is interpreted as it as the log odds of class membership so here we, we can understand that logistic regression is nothing but the log odds of an event or you can say log odds of a class membership those these log odds can be translated directly into probability of a class membership therefore logistic regression often is thought of simply as a model of probability of class membership you have undoubtedly dealt with logistic regression models many times without even knowing they are used used widely to estimate quantities like probability of default on credit probability of response to an offer probability of fraud on an account the probability of probably that a document is relevant to a topic and so on there are numerous examples you can find out where you unknowingly use the logistic regressions uh, here you can see uh, logistic regression is misnomer above we mentioned that the name logistic regression is a misnomer under the modern use of data science time you know recall that the distinction between classification and regression is whether the value for a target value is categorical or numeric depending on which we are going for uh, classification and uh, regression for logistic regression model produces numeric estimate obviously we always use the regression in case of numeric only that is why for logistic regression also uh, the model produces a numeric estimate the estimation of the log odds however the values of the target variable in the data are categorical that is one again interesting fact that is the values of the target variable in the data are categorical so debating this point is rather academic whether what is important to understand is that logistic regression is doing what logistic regression is doing it is estimating log odds or most or more loosely the probability of class memberships uh, over a categorical class so we consider it to be class probability estimation model not a regression model so so when you talk about logistic regression it might not be a completely regression model it might be a class as probability estimation model so uh, that is a few hint about logistic regression uh, please go through this chapter again uh, it contains lots of information regarding support vector machine regarding linear discriminant analysis um, uh, i am not going through lots of things here but it is very very important and interesting things to be understand and uh, we have gone through this classification part initially uh, but you can go through the linear discriminant and uh, support vector machine again uh, and if you have any question and doubt please let me know or i'll try to provide a video in next uh, in next upcoming video so till then uh, if you have any confusion please let me know we'll try to resolve over google meet that's it. Thank you.